So this is the beginning of the movie, the, the amazing opening scene. We see the bridge ops aboard the USS Kelvin. Do the bridge ops, are they good? Do they make sense? Let's watch. I have a reading. They've locked weapons on us. Red alert. Torpedo locked on us at 320 degrees. Mark two. Armed up with the SF Falcon Delta <laughs> 5. Incoming. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Why is that guy running? This is a bad situation. He's just running across the bridge. Got to get the steps in, man. Keep it tight. I'm guessing he's going from one station to another, but that means they're not prepped for battle. They're in real trouble. That's right. Oh, gosh. Yeah, okay. So you're saying that either his stations should be next to each other or there should be separate people doing separate stations. But if he has to run across the bridge, like this is a dire situation. Right, because if, if, they, if they get hit in that moment, Star Trek doesn't have... Like the, inner, I guess this is the Kelvin, the inertial dampeners aren't able to hold them in place. So they kick, they get kicked. That's he right. get injured, knocked he out. He hits his head killed. and now actually both stations are unmanned. That's right. Oof, high stakes. Mm. Coming fast. Fire all phasers. Damage report. Warp drive's been knocked out. Never seen anything like it. Weapons offline, main power 38%. They're firing another. Load popping them over shield. Oh, that scene in the theaters, it made me feel, yeah. okay, first of all, scientifically accurate, very good. You get a hole in your hull and people will get sucked out in space and there's, there's just there's nothing you can do. Like you grab at, like literally mm. nothing, like, mm. not even grabbing an atmosphere. And then she recoils off of the, the what is this, phaser, phaser ball? Yeah. Ah, brutal, brutal, like the reality of space travel. Mm. Yeah. And also, the, she's screaming and there's all this noise. And then as the atmosphere leaves, it just dials down to zero. It's like, oh, there truly is nothing in space. Mm -hmm. mm, chills. So one of the observations I have is they're all saying stuff, but... Who are they talking to? I mean, sort of going into the bridge. I see. But communication, if everybody's talking at the same time, how it's could the noise. information get from who it's supposed to get to? From the person that's saying it to the person who it's supposed to get to. It just becomes this... Yeah, it's cacophony. It's just everyone right. shouting. Like, who, who am I supposed to be listening to right now? I have mixed feelings about that because on one hand, you want like tight communications, like you press mm -hmm. press F4 and it goes, sends sends my message to tactical. Press F3, it sends it to shields or whatever, right? Yeah. But on the other hand, for situational awareness, maybe you just want everyone to know, like, like you announce it to the room and then whoever needs that information takes it. So I like that, but what if two people start talking at the same time? Like, how are you going to say? Uh, uh, well, but you, I'm sorry. Now we're dead. And the, and the captain's like, somebody <laughs> talk. So it looks like they have rules for determining who speaks because nobody talks over another person. Maybe it is systematic. They like cycle through the room. It's just a constant cycle. If you have nothing to say, then it's just five seconds of silence. Just, or just like, green light and keep going. Mm -hmm. Like comms are good. So maybe. maybe. But man, it would be hard to take in all that information because you're getting information in, on the bridge from multiple stations, people yelling their information. Are they yelling it to the captain? And he's sort of taking so, it all in? Gosh, so some information is not important enough for the captain to know. Some information needs to go to the captain so that way the captain can decide and like disseminate orders out. So, But I could also imagine that maybe they've been a crew for a long time. And so mm -hmm. they just know how to communicate very effectively. They know how to like to, mm -hmm. and, and it must be a captain's skill in order to be able to hear everyone's input and then figure out what do I need to do from this information? Yeah. So maybe it's just a really good captain. Maybe that's normal for a captain. Okay. Okay. Like, can we watch it one more time and just see yeah. what information they say? From the beginning? From the beginning. Let's do it. Let's do it. I have a reading. This guy has a reading. Here's a reading. They've locked weapons on us. Red alert. <laughs> weapons lock, yeah. <laughs> weapons lock, yeah, that's important. Red alert. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so you got to know what the situation is, tactical situation, and then captain says red alert. Yep. Torpedo locked on us at 320 degrees. Mark two. Armed up with evasive Falcon Delta 5. Incoming fast. Fire all phasers. Okay. So, so far, all weapons stuff. I guess that's right. Like, mm -hmm. you got to be aware of what's coming in towards you, and then 
get everyone up ready for battle and then also you need to know what to send back to them. right sounds good and i guess i guess uh kirk this is kirk's dad in this case george kirk he not only said weapons lock but he gave a position which must be relevant to the captain because then the captain gives like a maneuver sequence mm-hmm. based on that mm-hmm. position so maybe that's what happened there hmm. support. Warp been knocked out Never seen anything like it. Weapons offline, main power 38%. They're firing enough. Yep, gotta know what the situation, what the, gotta know what the health is of your vehicle. Otherwise you're like, go somewhere, yeah. but then like the engine's not working. So I think, I think that was the captain is talking to the engine room through his yeah. like chair comms. So the bridge crew actually isn't hearing that communication. Hmm. So I think that's good. Well, I mean, it's it's loudspeaker. It's not like an earpiece. So maybe the helmsman, maybe the helmsman already knows the engine's not working. Gosh, would you want like, Nothing. <laughs> yeah, gosh, would you want that to be a readout on some panel somewhere instead of having to verbally communicate it? I think Cause... so, because then, cause then you could be immediately updated of what the, the status is on the engine. Right, and then you have a console on the bridge. I don't know, but it's, a, it's a, an emergent situation, so maybe he just calls down and says, what's the deal? Yeah, get me the mm-hmm. update right now. Yeah. Another. Civilization has been lost. Are our shields even up? We have confirmed casualties. 11% and dropping, 10%. Shields at 9, we're dropping. All demanding power to forward shields. Prepare shuttles for evacuation. That seemed more chaotic to me. I wasn't wasn't clear if they're talking to the whole bridge or they're talking to their people. It's kind of just. As far as I can tell, it's just out to the entire room. Right. Maybe it is out of the entire room means for the captain's ears. Hmm. And they have a rotation. So station one talks, and then station two talks, then station three, then four, five, six, seven, and then start with one again. Just go around the room constantly. So nobody talks over one another. If you shout, that means for the captain. If you need to talk to your people, you do it on your microphone. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. I like that. I like mm-hmm. that. I wonder what the military actually does. I don't know. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. Yeah. Hmm.